Hi, everyone. Hi, and welcome to this wonderful online summit, Connecting Soul Beings. Today, I warmly invite you to meet Judy Schneider. Judy is an equine inspired retreat leader, and she has a business in the USA called Healing Through Horses. She specializes in helping women to fully embrace their powerful self by allowing the horses to help them with the healing processes and the releasing processes. Horses are amazing and inspiring healers. They are connected to spirit and they can help us with their wisdom and their beautiful energies. Judy has a long-standing history with horses and she shares with us her stories and how she got involved in this beautiful process, healing with horses. Now, this conversation doesn't just start from a introduction process. We actually had a wonderful conversation going already and we ended up talking around the helping of animals with death and how they transition into the spirit planes. So it is a little bit unusual, but I just wanted to introduce you to that. From there, the conversation beautifully flowed into how Judy got involved with the horses. So grab yourself a cup of tea or coffee and enjoy this beautiful conversation with Judy. If you hear any crying in the background, I don't know if you can. Oh, I just heard it. Is it a dog? That's one of my dogs. Yes. Is she okay? <laughs> he's 15. Oh. And he's, um, he had two strokes last year and he's suffering from a little bit of dementia. So whenever I'm not around, yeah. this is what happens. <laughs> but he'll whenever settle he... in a minute. I literally just closed the door. So he's, yeah, he'll settle in a minute. His sister's on, on her bed. So. You want to bring him in, Bianca? No, he's okay. Okay. Because I have a dog. He'll be he, all right. My husband, yeah, I have a dog. And he was under the desk when we started to talk, and it was thundering. And it's like, oh, he's going to start to cry. But he didn't because he was right near my feet. So. Yeah. 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 No, it's so good. mommies, right? Your mommies. Exactly. exactly. No, he's preparing to transition. So we're yeah. supporting him any way we can. So, yeah. So, and his sister's probably not far behind either. They're both the same age. Uh, yeah. mm. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, but I know where he's going, so he'll be in a good place. Yes. And that is always a, a comfort. <laughs> yes. always a comfort. Yeah. Yeah, but he's, he's having more problems with it than me at the moment. He's like, I don't want to go. I don't want to leave you alone because I'm not sure if you're going to be okay without me. And and I keep, every day I tell him, it's okay, you can go, you know, it's okay, I'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did that with a cat. Uh, she crossed over years ago, and she was, uh, her name was Shiloh, and I had her ever since she was just a little teeny baby, and uh, she got her name because she was a scaredy cat, really, and would hid under the couch, where, you know, one particular couch. And it was Shiloh. You know, why are you going so low, you shy little girl? So that's how she got her name, Shiloh. Oh, good. And, um, yeah, she was, um, I never had a cat die or in the process. And when I picked her up, you know how the body just, like an accordion, and it freaked me out. So I called yeah. the vet and she told me what was going on. So I said, oh, okay, fine, now I understand. So, you know, all the animals were gathered around. I was there holding her and... You know, I remember when I said to her, it's okay, you know, I love you. Had a full, we had a full life together and we traveled all over the place. And, you know, now it's time to, you can go whenever you want. You know, safe travels, my love, and gave her a kiss. And, um, you know, she, bless her heart, she waited till I stopped crying. And then she left. Oh. You know, she passed and uh, I thought wow I, that was too fast you know I wasn't prepared for that no you know it was so fast and she obviously was you know waiting for me to be okay yeah and uh, it was um it was really uh really mind-blowing <laughs> when that happened very sad but very 
um, loving in the same way mm-hmm. that she left her t- she left she very generous of her she waited for me and then she you know allowed herself to pass so yeah yeah and they're beautiful in that way too because they really they really want to make sure that they can go at the right time so that we are absolutely okay yes yeah yeah they're very selfless in that way and they, they, they even suffer longer because of that yes yeah she mm. taught me a lot about that mm. Mm. You know, to be um really to not to hold on so long for me yeah. to yeah. be more generous yeah. and uh, and be there more for for them when it's time when it's their time yeah. and that's helped with several of the horses as well you know that have crossed over and <clears throat> you know that one was lingering and um and i was not ready he was the third one in a year and mm-hmm. i was not ready for him to go and um and he knew that and it was last august actually it's coming up on a year and um it was hot and we had an umbrella up so he'd be in the shade until the vet came and he was a big draft and it was, you know, very evident that he had a stroke and he could not get up. So uh, it was really terrible. So this huge horse not be able to get up. And I remember giving him, you know, little, cu- little uh, caps of water just to keep him moist. Yeah. And every- I did that he wanted to get up and then he couldn't and each time it exhausted him more and it's like okay now what do I do do I keep giving the water you know because he tried to get up Mm. or do I not Mm. and I thought um okay I'll get a pillow you know set him up so he's comfy and I'll still give him the water and um that worked out well better not well better better yeah 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 it's it's really and it's so sad you know because you can only do so much yeah and they have to go through their own journey as well and i've even asked hobie you know would you like me to help you would you need assistance and he Mm -hmm. goes no i'm just gonna fall asleep and i go okay Mm -hmm. stop to suffer he goes no i'm okay i'm a bit uncomfortable but i'm okay so yeah you just have to trust that you know you just have to trust that so right yeah, so every day it's, you know, when I leave the house or when we go to sleep, I just say, you know, I just say my goodbyes because I never know when. It, it's going to happen very, really, very soon, but, yeah, he hasn't shown me exactly yeah. when. And the interesting thing is with animals that I have spoken to and connected with who are about to pass over, they actually let me know when they're going and they're showing me exactly where they're going and they also show me who's waiting for them. On the other side. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, and then, you know, they share with me all the messages that they have for their human guardians and, you know, and they, they let me know I'm going tonight or I'm going next week or yeah. But when it's really, really close and I can see all the imagery of where they're going and, you know, the transition. And sometimes they even let me know whether they're staying in the spirit world or whether they reincarnate straight away or yeah. So. Oh, that's amazing. Mm. It's a beautiful gift. Oh my goodness. It yeah. is, yeah. And that is, it's really interesting. It is a beautiful, that is a beautiful process. And to be able to, to assist with that for the animals, but at the same time, it's extremely sad, you know, because sometimes yeah. I work with animals for a longer period of time. And um, yeah, you do go through those moments where you're like, whoa, okay, I really had a good connection with that particular one. And, that's um yeah but it's it's i find it an honor and it's just so beautiful at the same time that i can help them with that and yeah you know pass on the the final messages to to their carers so mm-hmm. yes yeah. yeah, so a friend of mine uh cat par- ca- carried a message that buster he was the draft in the water story um and she's new at um tapping in to the animals so uh, she would, um, so she would argue with the message, mm-hmm. like I don't understand that, right? So she would, and then she would, you know, annoy the, annoy him. So yes. he would stop talking, and then I got really upset. It's so like just be quiet and don't ask him any questions because I can tell you what those words mean or what he's trying, what he's saying because it was in horse language. Yeah, and it's like I, I can tell you what that means. So mm-hmm. basically, um, uh 
saying that he was, um, you know, basically running free, right? Having a good time. Met yeah. up with all the horses that passed on from yeah. our herd, his herd, and that he was uh, the leader of the band. So she didn't understand what the band meant. And I said, oh, I know what that means. That was just, that was the argument. And I said, oh, I know what that means, is that he transformed to a stallion, and the band are the horses that are he's in charge of. Wow. That's the band, you know, in the wild, they're called bands. So I said, that's beautiful. I can, I can see him being the stallion. Yeah. And then you know, the little horse that, a pony that passed, crossed over very quickly and unexpectedly, was also, he, tra he transformed to a uh, black stallion. Mm -hmm. and um, he was a small draft, and he transformed into a Percheron black stallion, this huge, humongous draft. So there's two, and they were kind of a little competitive, you know, love buddies, you know, like brothers, but competitive, and that's what they were in there. And, the, you know, in the, um, the spirit world, was, they were still, now they were both stallions. Yes. Com yes. Or the, competing for the limelight, right? It's beautiful. Wow. Uh, yeah. 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 So that was pretty awesome. Mm, definitely. Definitely. Yes. And made me cry, of course. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And it's wonderful, too, because you have such a great connection with the horses, haven't you? Yes. I feel I do. Yeah. I always have. You know, growing up, I was, uh, I got the horse bug when I was, I think it was in fourth grade. Mm -hmm. I was in my um, math class, I believe, <laughs> looking out the window. <laughs> Bored. Yes. Um, in, the, in far in the distance, I saw a red barn, and uh, I thought, oh, my gosh, there must be horses over there. And, you know, when you're in fourth grade, you're small. I forget how old you are in fourth grade. Mm -hmm. But I thought, oh, my gosh, it's so far, far away. How will I ever get there? So um, we were out at recess. And then, um, anyways, we went up the hill to play some kind of, like, softball or something. And then I saw the barn again, and I thought, oh, all I have to do, really, <clears throat> is pretend to chase a ball that yes. someone hits, like, really far away. And then I can get closer to the barn to figure out where it was. So that's how I was introduced to horses for the first time wow. was I told my dad, I said, you know, there's a big red barn near where we play uh, softball at school. And um, do you know how to get there? And he knew exactly who it was. And he said, oh, I know him. And, you know, mentioned his name. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I'm going to go meet, you know, the owner and this big man. I mean, he was huge. And, um, oh, my gosh, maybe if I'm a good girl, I'll be able to be with the horses and all that jazz. And so I was, you know, a quasi-good girl, but I did get to go to be with the horses. Yes. And, um, and that's how it all started was I was introduced in fourth grade, and then when I got older, um, I was allowed to, you know, ride my bike because it was a kind of a distance from my house. Um, so I used to ride my bike from, I think it was – Probably for six years, sixth grade. No, I mean, uh, I was in junior high school, so seventh grade to twelfth grade. Every day, without, with the exception of the summertime, um, I would go up every day to be with the horses, mm -hmm. muck stalls, ride, all off, you know, uh, crazy <laughs> bareback rides on um, golf courses. You're not supposed to ride, but you have to. <laughs> If you're a little kid, you have to ride in the golf course. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. You're not, I know well now. Um, so I thought. And uh, that was, that's when it all started, during that wow. fourth grade class when I got bored. Mm -hmm. Wow, fantastic. Yeah. So, so what kept your passion going with the horses? Uh, you know, it's uh, like a natural love, mm. you know. It was um, – you know, as I got older, you know, as graduated high school, went to college, I, I stepped away from them because of work, mm -hmm. uh, working and going to school. And, but they were always there, you yeah. know, always, always, you know, like a, a, truly like a dear old friend that you haven't seen in years, but you can pick up the phone and yeah. start off where you just left off. Love so, that. You know, so I always had 
I always had a picture of my the first horse I ever cared for and loved. Her name was Go Go Girl, mm-hmm. and um, she that was that connection. It was an old Polaroid, and I still have it in my tr- Captain Crunch treasure treasure chest. I don't know if you know what Captain Crunch is, but it's no. a cereal. Oh, okay. or was it a cereal uh, way way back? And if you I guess buy enough Captain Crunch, you get this treasure chest. Well, I still have that. And she's in there. She's on the top, and she's always been in my treasure chest. Mm. And uh, regardless of where I was or what I was doing, Go Go Girl would be with me. So she kept me connected, even though if I wasn't physically there, I was always spiritually and emotionally with the horses. Mm-hmm. And um, and as a teen, um, I have to say, uh, to be totally honest is that they saved my life mm-hmm. uh, as a teenager you know it wasn't easy for me and it was um, very challenging and difficult to kind of figure out who I was where I belong um, you know I was a little looking back a little quirky a little different kind of new kind of things that were going on but no one really understood how I knew that so I was you know called names and stuff um, And then, you know, starting to believe that I was a little strange because that's what I was called. You know, how would you know this if you weren't there? That kind of thing. So you just kind of, you know how that is. So you just kind of learn not to say a lot, Mm -hmm. but know a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of hide out. And then after a while, it gets really hard to hide out. Mm. Uh, Right. And then, um, so she kept me, I have to say she kept me alive because she was the one, I'll probably get emotional, she was the one that I would go to, um, you know, uh, when, I was at, when I was at the barn. And I knew once if I could just get home uh, and get through my chores, of course, you know, and then get on my bike, then I'll be okay. Yeah. And she was yeah. there, you know, winning and waiting for me and we would have all kinds of, you know, beautiful times together. Oh. So. Yeah, so she, um, I'm very, very grateful for her because she did, um, she kept me here. She gave yeah. me a reason to live, really. Yeah. Yes. Wow. You know? Yeah. So, go, go, girl. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> and yeah. for yourself, go, go, girl. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Wow. And that really demonstrates as well the, the, the power in connecting with the horses, you know, and that they're such beautiful spiritual beings and they have such amazing wisdom that it's just beautiful to tap into. And I can so understand what you're saying about, you know, being different and just knowing and then not speaking about it. Right. Yeah. Right. And especially yeah. I can appreciate in, in those days where all this spiritual talk was just not on the radar at all. No, not at all. You know, no, even I when I grew up, it was just not on the radar whatsoever. You heard no. a little bit maybe about yoga and a little bit about meditation perhaps, but that was the extent of it. So mm-hmm. to have those experiences of, you know, this is all that stuff that's happened to me and it's not necessarily tangible or I don't know what that is. Yeah. Um, you do raise it, then, yeah, that can absolutely be, be very much a challenging time. Yes, yeah, very, very. Yeah. And I remember being called. I uh, so you know sharing something that I knew that was going to happen. Mm. Um, I told my mom. I said, you know, if someone, you know, this it would have to do with uh, uh, dear friends, right, mm-hmm. of ours. And uh, so I said, I think this is, you know, is so and so going to get a divorce? And she looked at me, and her eyes bugged out, like I did something wrong. And she said, Have you been eavesdropping again? I don't, you know, as a kid, I, we were taught not to do that. So I didn't do it. Yeah. And, right. But I knew. And um, she actually she said, how did you know that? Were you eavesdropping? So I thought, oh, well, I did know that. And then I asked another question and she said, well, how did you know that? And I think, and then I got in trouble because I was mm-hmm. eavesdropping, which I was not. And then, um, you know, every once in a while, something else would, you know, appear and mm-hmm. I would become aware of it and I would innocently ask and then again I was accused of um you know doing something wrong so I thought well I don't really want to keep getting in trouble so I think I'll just stop yeah. sharing 
what I know. So that's where Go Go Girl really saved me because I would mm. talk to her about all kinds of things. Yeah. Uh, you know, that were happening. And, um, you know, did she believe me? And of course, she followed me around connecting. And I thought, well, that's, that's true, then if she is, you know, staying by my side, and, um, you know, I'm not freaking her out, it, it must be true. So she yeah. really validated, you know, as a kid, you know, understand in a, in a very different way than as an adult, but as a child and a teen, I understood that to mean, you know, that I was okay, mm -hmm. that she wasn't going to leave, even if I was telling her some things that seemed a bit odd, you know, um, or talk to her like a confidant, yeah. you know, she was, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Wonderful. Because that's... Um how did you how did you actually deal with that over the years like wh when was the time for you where you felt absolutely comfortable and trusting that you can share what you already know may happen or you can share your infinite wisdom with other people when was that point it wasn't too long ago, actually, that I came out of the closet, as I like to say it. I should say out of the barn. Um, um, it happened in a most unusual way because mm -hmm. uh, I forgot about that part of myself. Mm -hmm. It was, I went to sleep basically for years. Um, so one day I had a visitor. And she drove, there was this big, humongous black truck, huge truck mm -hmm. that came down the road and into healing through horses. And I'm thinking, who the heck is that? I don't know. And it was a blonde woman. I thought, I don't even know who this is. She's got this monster truck and it's kind of freaking me out. Who is she? You know, because we live in a rural area. I don't know. Strange people come and go. And I thought maybe she's one of those, you know, uh, strange women. Yeah. So, <laughs> So uh, she, anyway, she was just drawn to Healing Through Horses, yeah. and she was drawn down our road, which many women say they are. They just are, they just need to come down. So mm -hmm. this gal just needed to come down, and um, we were talking, and um, I was you know, introducing her to the horses, and um, she said, she, um, after a while, I she shared with me that she was um, a psychic and very, you know, had, uh, she didn't call me, she didn't identify as a psychic, but she just was very, she said she just likes to tune in, you know, she tunes in a lot. Yes. So downplayed a lot. I'm thinking, oh, okay, she's my kind of lady. She tunes in, you know. And then, um, so there was a horse that came up to her and to me together. Her name is Madonna and uh, a dear, uh, dear, dear horse. And, um, she said, well, can I touch her? And I said, well, of course you can touch her. Well, let's wait, you know, to see if she allows you, mm -hmm. you know, wait for the invitation. And then if you get it, then of course. And if you're not familiar with how, then I'll show you. Mm -hmm. So the invitation was um, offered and accepted. And so I put my hand on her, you know, where she likes to be touched the first time. Mm -hmm. and, um, my hands were purple. So which is not unusual mm -hmm. growing up red and per turned red and purple. And I, it was, I didn't know quite what that was mm -hmm. about. And obviously I didn't tell anybody because then I thought I could never go to the horses because it was more pronounced with the horses. And I thought I can't share that mm -hmm. because then I would have to go to the doctors or something and not be able to ride my bike to the, to the horses. Yeah. So anyways, this gal said, and she didn't say anything, but she touched my hand and her hand was hot, and uh, my hand was, you know, warm. And she touched, and uh, it changed. And then the energy started to exchange between the two of us, and I wasn't quite sure what that was. Mm -hmm. So then she had, the com she had the conversation with me was, did you know, or do you know, what's going on? And uh, she said, look at your hands. And I said, yeah, they're always like that. And she smiled, and she said, of course they are. And, um, and that was it. And then she kind of took me under her wing. And then finally, it was 
um, I, it was time to ask me, you know, are you ready to say what you think is going on? Mm -hmm. And I said, um, yeah, I can tell you. So I did. And, um, and I said, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> it's just between you and me and the tree. We do a pre meditation. Just yeah. between you and the tree. Don't tell anybody because they'll laugh. They'll, you know, um, you know, being judged and like going back to the old days. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she, so she laughed. She said, oh, okay, I won't tell anybody, but everybody already knows. But okay, I won't tell. So I really had to think about that, you know, for a while. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm kind of going on about this, but I think it was, I would say, the first time I um, showed up truly as myself yeah. was, mm, let's see, we opened in 2007. So probably I would say the last nine years or 10 years, uh, I came, I finally came out with my medicine box. Wow. I of American practices. Mm -hmm. And, um, I would totally took a, one thing out, you know, I didn't take a lot of it out, but one thing. And, that, and actually I carried my drum out. And I thought, okay, the drum is safe. People know drumming. This group of women, they all seem, you know, pretty cool. I'm not going to freak anybody out. Um, and that was when I first stepped in to expose myself mm -hmm. to see what would happen. And everybody thought, oh, my God, a drum, a drum. Well, then I brought more drums out, and that was good. And then we did a little more ceremony. Um, and then um, what happened was, you know how uh, spirit works. Uh, I was drumming for someone. And then, like, I don't remember what happened. So I was one place at one moment, and I ended up someplace else near the horses, but away from the women drumming and dancing, which I generally don't do. And um, they said I was singing, which I really don't generally do. Um, so it just, uh, it wasn't me who, who um, showed up. It was the spirit guides within me allowed me to come. Well, just pushed me. I, I don't know. I yeah. still, um, I think about it. It's just, I don't know how it happened. It just did. Mm -hmm. um, you know, no one freaked out too much. Um, they asked lots of questions, so I answered the best I could. Yeah. And then um, from then on, just slowly and slowly, I would add a little bit more, and I would ask a certain question, uh, or I put my hand on. You know, I was, you know how you just guided to the moment to the moment in time where someone needs that touch right at that spot and you don't yeah. I don't know how I get there but I do mm -hmm. and um, so it just was gradual mm -hmm. and I think I think I told myself if I was if I am really going to be in service to women and I am and I do feel like I've been called to do this work with the horses and women then I really have to be courageous to really to step into who I am. Yeah. Not hide anymore. So it was gradual mm -hmm. and uh, it was scary because um, I was waiting for the laughter and pointing the finger, you know, and comping. Mm -hmm you know, uh, concerned, oh, you're a fraud, and who do you think you are, and you can't even explain what you do, so why should we listen to you, all that kind of jibber-jabber. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that was alive and well. And I thought, you know, um, they can ha if that happens, I can step back and just be very gracious and say thank you mm -hmm. and have no explanation or not uh, get into a big discussion about it because it's not my stuff, it's theirs. Mm -hmm. So, so as time went on, um, I was, I just became more open mm -hmm. and prepared myself for, for who 
whoever came, you know, through a, through a smudging before they arrived, obviously. And during that time, and constantly even talk, when I'm talking with them or with the horses in prayer, you know, quiet prayer, kind of coming and going, coming in and going out. And um, I didn't really make the decision, right, to touch the body or to, um, I do kind of, we wear boots around here, of course, so I'll say, can I, um, can I touch your toes, you know, boot to boot or toe to toe in our boots. And that was, that's kind of what starts everything. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, and then it just happens. So yeah. I thought, you know, this is just um, the way it is. And whenever it starts to happen, it's going to happen. And um, it will be, you know, I'm the, I'm the messenger, really. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. So. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. That was really amazing. Because I think a lot of people experience similar journeys for a better word um i certainly have in that way as well you know to have all those beliefs of what other people may think and for me personally it came to a point where i actually got really depressed about it too because you start to lose yourself at some level because you really start to think to yourself you know who am i actually and what is all this weird stuff that is you know happening and why do I know so many things? Why do I feel this? And why do I hear this? And, you know, and that's, um, that, that's really beneficial for us to speak about it for ourselves. But I also believe for everyone else that is listening to us and knowing that you're not alone doing these processes. And I don't know about you, but I'm still learning. I'm still being, you know, yeah added on to in terms of the skills and and the levels of, you know, what we can do as well. So it's, it's an ongoing, ongoing. It's so exciting, isn't it? When something else, it's like, Oh, I didn't know. Oh, it's then I first used, I used to say, well, that can't be real. And uh, that, what happened there? Wait wait a minute. That was too fast. I didn't get that. You know, can you say it again? And it's, you know, I feel like I'm being laughed at, which I probably am, you know, they're probably giggling. Mm. along with me and I learn not to say that anymore it's like oh thank I just say thank you I'm you know in grace thank you uh and I do I agree with you Bianca I think it's really important for you know those who are listening or and doing this kind of work um regardless of where we are Mm -hmm. is that we're not alone we might feel alone Mm-hmm. Um, and we might feel like the odd woman out sometimes uh, if we, share, you know, if our discernment is we're not as discerning as we might want to be. Um, we might get reactions that we were were surprised to get, yeah. but not to be frightened by that or or um, influenced mm-hmm. by others in a negative way. So it will it will create a sense of wanting to retreat. Yeah. Therefore, not really be an empowered being, mm, right? Exactly. Empowered, beautiful, spiritual being. Yeah. yeah. Um, because the laughter stops. I haven't been laughed at since I was probably in fourth grade, mm. or maybe, but in my adult years, it's not, um, it's my old story of the memories of being so humiliated, you know, and, yeah. um, you know, just icky. Uh, and now it's like, oh, well, that's cool. Can you teach me? And it's like, yeah. cool. exactly. I, you know, yeah. I, I don't know, but uh, just, let's do something. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Know? Yeah, people are in awe as well yeah. sometimes. Yeah. And we and, all have it, right? We all are, yes. I think, that we are all spiritual beings. And yeah. um, I just love bumping into other um, healers who – like yourself, right? You get the message. It's like, oh, wow, I want that. I would love to develop that. Yes. I so want to know if they're laughing at, you know, if they're giggling from above our animals, you know, the animals really. Yeah. And, um, of course, you know, visiting with my loved ones, the, in the, the uh, humans, yeah. however they are now, to uh, just have a chat. Exactly. Um, yeah. Here's some back, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Which you know, is I, I had to wonder the conversation, but I'd love to get that message back yeah. somehow. 
Right. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, you know, it, it's also a very much a trusting process, you know, trusting that whatever you do receive, whatever you do feel, and like you're saying, I don't decide where my hands go on that body, um, how we, you know, where the healing needs to take place. It just happens. But actually to trust that I've, I've experienced that that is the major block for quite a lot of people because, and, and sometimes we do it ourselves. I mean, I certainly yeah. sometimes go into a session and information comes through me and I'm, sometimes my, my human side kicks in and goes, you're just making that up as you go along. This can't be right. You know, <laughs> it happens. Right. It happens, right? You're still yeah. in a human form as well. So you yeah. sometimes do have that. But then when you relay that information, you hear back from, from the, the person to say, oh, wow, you know, it's like you've just been into my house. You just described that area and you've never yes. been here. And it's like... Oh, okay. So I wasn't making that up then. <laughs> you know, but that's also great because it it helps you. It, it sort of reaffirms that you are doing the right thing, and that the information that comes through is exactly what needs to be said or heard in that moment. Yes, and frequently that happens in um, when I'm leading retreats. Right, we usually have a sacred circle. Um, you know, and um, I usually always check in. How so? You know, how is everybody doing? And then, you know, it starts. So I might get, you know, I'll pick up on aches and pains or some emotion, you know. And, um, but I do like to check. Is it me, you know, or is it not? Yes. So I'll yes. usually ask, you know, does someone have, uh, I'll never forget this. Does someone have a pain in their right side? You know, and I pointed on my body. So someone on my right side pointed and, some, and I said, you know, does someone have a pain on their left temple so it was like I was being not attacked at all, but picking up, and it was this overwhelming sense of constriction, with, and we just started. And I yeah. thought, oh, my goodness, this is going to be either really, really hard or really, really quick, yeah. um, right? So then I thought in that moment, I just thought I need to, I need to keep asking, because I was feeling a whole bunch of stuff. And I thought, okay, well, you know, my, I'm being called upon, and how can I be best in service? And I thought, I can't do this alone. So I called in the horses. Yeah. And the ones, I'll never forget, so powerful, the ones that had some of the aches and pains, not all of them, the horses stood right behind them. Wow. And it was amazing. You know, and everybody wants to say, hello, horsey, or aren't you cute? And it's like, don't interrupt because they're working. Yeah. They are doing their healing. So just, you know, be open and breathe, but don't touch them mm -hmm. uh, until they're done. Yeah. So the one, I'll, I remember this, the one with the pain in the side, uh, the horse, uh, the pony that crossed over, his name was Einstein, who's now a Percheron stallion uh, in his own spirit world came right to her side where the pain was and had his muzzle on it, wiggling his lips mm -hmm. right on that spot. And then I, as I, and I remember, I remember that I went, Ugh, you know, had that huge exhale. Yeah. Yeah. And then he stopped and it was really, uh, magnificent. Yeah. And then he did our work. He, I was helping her. She was helping him, and he was also helping me. Wow. It was really, really very. Um, I don't know. Magical is such a corny word, but it felt magical. Yeah. And then, anyways, yeah. the other horses um, did their uh, worked on. Um, when I say worked, you know, they were going up and down the chakras and standing where they needed to and mm -hmm. looked a few necks and um, nibbled a few crowns and, you know, their work was done and everybody felt better and they were symptom free of any kind of pain or distress. So it was really, really interesting. And what was also fascinating about that is that the horses know how to take care of themselves mm -hmm. so much better than us. So at one point they were all very quiet around our circle, when they were done, they all took off mm -hmm. and ran and bucked and yes, farted and just exploded. 
to release the energy and then they came back to a very calm state wow. and was just hanging and I thought okay that's um, the best I could ever wish for them is that they you know have that ability to and the freedom and the space to do that for themselves yes so they crap all of that negativity and all that unsettled energy you know in their bodies yes yeah and they're able to let that go mm. I mean, no journaling no talking they just you know and i kind of, i'm not i'm not knocking journaling at all of no. course but what i say to the women is you know you don't have to journal about it because you just experienced it yes. if you start journaling about the something that happened before the experience you're defeating you're not you know it's different it's the ego and the mind that you do not really want you don't necessarily need to revisit it's to kind of reflect on the shift and the transformation of the horse encounter mm -hmm. and you know and then how to bring that in in a really very simple way yeah you know and not get lost in the mind but no. to stay in you know to stay in the heart and i really to encourage people not to journal right away just yeah. be in it you know, exactly. it, you're going to switch over to the, to the mind. Yeah. Too soon. yeah. And it also allows the energies to just integrate. Yes. You know, and, and to really enjoy that integration and that healing process as well. So yes. really no absorb it at every level. Mm. Yeah. I kind of see it as when, when I, I hear that and when I um, see women, um, when they leave, I see them, you know, I tell them to be, prepared for more um messages however that might be yeah and how i usually see it happen is it's a beautiful little rain mm -hmm. uh, shower that comes down and that's yeah. like the messages and the clearing and the cleansing and the horse energy and it's like it's this very soft chimey like crystal like experience mm -hmm. it's just really kind of divine yeah yeah definitely wow oh it makes me want to come and see you <laughs> experience that would be i'd love to see you and meet you and the horses too <laughs> yeah beautiful beautiful and you know it, it distance also actually you know makes me want to come and see you it doesn't really matter whether you're physically there or doing that sort of work remotely because it's all energy, right? Yes. And we can all tap into that, so which is really amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Working with horses is one of the most amazing and wonderful and uplifting experiences that I've had. It's really they're so powerful, yet so gentle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Isn't caring, it? yeah. Respectful. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. So well, we is the words. They truly, mm. if we show up, you know, as ourselves and, um, and wait for the invitation, mm -hmm. um, they're very respectful. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they are. So it sounds like you, you, you have quite a, a holistic approach to how you work. So it's not just the horses um, that you right. work with. Mm. Right. And how you, how, I mean, how many horses do you have? Uh, we have um, five yeah. now. Yeah. We actually, well, uh, no, actually four. I'm sorry. We have, um, we've, our herd has changed. So mm -hmm. we have two horses. It's kind of an interesting herd at this point. We have two horses that have been with us for quite a while. And then we have a pony named Rosa who thinks she is just the queen, which she is. And this little borough named Boo, who is about 30 something, 33, I think the vet said. Oh. And um, Boo is quite the healer. I mean, he is absolutely amazing. Hmm. Women have written um, stories about Boo, poems to him, love letters, um, letters of gratitude, poured their heart out, you know, to Boo. And um, he's just an absolute love. Yeah. He just, he just radiates. He's like, he's an old soul. 
Yeah. You look at his eyes, and I swear, they look human. I mean, they have that huge, big eyes, of course, big, beautiful brown eyes, but they have that, I don't know, that knowing, mm. that gentle, I don't know, the only thing I can think of, like, spirit guide eye, just mm. really there. Yeah. And so anyway, so that's our, that's our herd right now. Beautiful, beautiful. So I'm always curious, like, do you, do you train them or do you teach them or is it the other way around for them the to other way the work around. that you do? They, um, they don't, I don't teach them anything about mm. this. Um, when I, you know, the, my, the way that I like to work with the horses and when women come on retreat is I ask, you know, I let them, I obviously let the horses know what's up and how long and you know, introduce, let them know who's coming mm -hmm. and that, you know, we will need their assistance. And if you're interested in assisting, please let me know mm -hmm. uh, however you want to. And that's usually stepping in or stepping up. And they usually all do except Rosa because okay. she's the queen. Um, but it's like queen, little oh, queen. <laughs> right? But she, then I have to kind of coax her, you know, I apologize, but I say I need you because you can teach something really valuable, you know, at a particular moment. Yeah. But generally, no, no training or anything other than, you know, just, um, just how they are. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm always in awe. I mean, after years, it's, it still amazes me how um, true they are, you know, how magnificent they are in their own way. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what are the things that we can experience working with the horses? Well, oh, let's see. I do um, well, lots of things. We do um, breathing, right? We match the breath. Mm -hmm. um, some, uh, if someone, if a woman is really stuck and um, blocked, what I usually will invite, I'll invite them if they would like to sit on the horse. Not go for a ride, but bareback and sit. And because our root chakra is in alignment with the, the horse's heart chakra. So oh, it's that connection. It's the connection, right? Yeah. Your um, heart to the root. And for them to just sit. Sometimes what I'll do also, which I love, uh, Madonna is great at this, is that she, she's okay with women laying down on her. Mm -hmm. opening up right opening all of the chakras up and just laying there mm -hmm. um, we don't walk like that but sometimes she will walk um if she needs to kind of uh either get the balance or move something around that i'm not aware of yeah uh, right so that is usually quite tremendous um once she, once the gal woman knows you know she's okay mm -hmm. if she wants to you can, but she really doesn't have to because, you know, we're there to support her. Yeah. So a lot of times, you know, that we do that quite a bit. Um, you know, the usual introduction as far as, you know, grooming, um, getting to know your horse. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to, you know, every, a lot of women have never groomed a horse. So... They never had that experience, so I don't put a brush in their hand. I'll say, you know, scratch them, you know, touch them, feel them, smell them, you know. Mm -hmm. I said, you're going to taste them because the hair is going to come out and don't spit it out, but just be aware of what's in your mouth. Yeah. And put it on your sleeve. Keep it. You don't have to spit it out. It's not going to hurt you. You know, just keep all of the horse with you. Um and uh, so we do that, and that's usually quite um, profound because mm -hmm. a lot of, like I said, a lot of women have not had that experience. Yeah. Um, some women are frightened of horses, or they remember as a kid, someone said, "Don't walk behind the horse because you'll get kicked." So therefore, horses are dangerous. You know, you can't get too close. And what a metaphor, right, for relationships, for life. Oh yeah. Um, cautious right that kind of thing so I generally will actually I love when they say that because 
uh, we can de we can you know demystify that because it's a limiting belief and it's false. So I would take them like a as a child, you know, take as I used to take the little kid kids' hands. I said, just take my hand, and I want you to follow me. Yeah. And we'll and then before you know it, she's behind the horse, and we're having a conversation behind not all the horses, but one, you know, a couple in particular. Um, and she, you know, look, realizes where she is and then spook gets herself scared. So that's the beginning of her transformation is when she's truly in her heart, she feels comfortable. Mm -hmm. And then when she in her head and recalls something in the past, she gets scared. So yeah. from there, we just, you know, move forward in different ways. Yeah. Um, you know, through that experience, and before you know it, we're having a tea party, you know, underneath the horse, and <laughs> talking about the kinds of stuff, and, you know, brushing the tail, and doing the little spa, you know, if they have, if they need some more, a different kind of experience, mm -hmm. um, you know, to stay longer, and yeah. to stay closer, which is moving through their fear, yeah. uh, you know, of the unknown, really, right? Yeah, yeah. Wow. I'm just imagining that. That's just, yeah, that's so, such an amazing process because it really allows you to tap into your heart when you're with them. And for me personally, I mean, it's, I don't know how you experience that, but the minute I even tune into the energy of a horse, I can feel myself automatically just drop into my heart. Yeah. And there is none of that headspace. So my energy is just lifted up straight away. Yes, exactly. You know, really get to that high level of, well, I call it the higher vibration because you match yeah. your energy to that where the horse is and yeah. it just happens automatically. But I can also appreciate that for a lot of people that is a very unfamiliar territory. So they really need to be able to then, and that's mm -hmm. what I'm envisaging that is part of your process is to help them to get to that level is indeed to have them getting out of their headspace and their worries and their fears to then say, hey, it is a very safe environment and you can absolutely match your energy with that of the horse. And mm -hmm. the word allowing comes to mind. So yeah. th there might even be a process of women not allowing themselves to feel into that to actually be in their heart space they're not allowing themselves to be recognizing themselves and then be with the horse in that same moment mm -hmm. because there is so much going on you know in particular with women that they always feel that they need to do certain things and they have to be here and they have to behave in this way because that is expected and that's all that head stuff whereas when you when you then align yourself with the, with the horse energy there's absolutely no expectations. There and isn't, and it's totally different. Yes, yes. They're, they're, you know, I always, uh, I don't do this, and I always say I'm going to, and I always forget. I always, I always think about taking a picture of them before, like mm -hmm. when they first arrive, you know, <clears throat> and, and uh, a quick, you know, a quickie, um, and they don't know it, right? Because yeah. <laughs> they're close for it. Yes. And then what, it, what they look like after, mm -hmm. uh, because it's amazing, uh, as you know from your own experience, is the, the level of um, lightness or the degree of heaviness, I should say, the degree of heaviness really leaves. And um, I usually say, look in the mirror, see what you notice. Mm -hmm. Or do you notice anything? You know, I'll carry my little funky mirror around. And they'll say, oh, I used to have, you know, such a big, you know, um, wrinkle up here or, you know, my face was so, and, you know, um, looked so tight mm -hmm. and um, serious, right? And uh, I said, Anne, now what? And she said, I, and I said, and you look younger? And you, or I said, I, you know, do you see yourself different? And she says, yes. And I said, well, you can say what you see. Well, I look younger, and I yeah. swear, younger. They look. We do look younger, right? Yeah. Um, so, it's really. Um, I I always I, I think I'm going to start doing that, taking a photo. Yeah, beautiful. And that, yeah. That's 
which is interesting because I see the same thing in people too. Mm -hmm. When I connect them to their animals, to their pets, I I don't really even like that word to their animal companions and have them at the same frequency. You can just see that shift happening. (laughs) You can almost hear a clunk, (laughs) you know, they're in that energy. They're all, you know, it's just like, okay, they're in. And then you can see that shift happening in the whole body just reflects that, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. They light Mm -hmm. up. They, you know, they become full of fire almost. Yeah, they do. They do. Another thing that women that I like to do with women is for them to introduce themselves to the horses, yeah, like a cocktail party, mm-hmm. um, you know that kind of thing. <clears throat> um, but that's kind of getting old fashioned. That word cocktail party. So you know, as a, in a gathering, you're in a store, right? <laughs> in a gathering. You know how yes. you you know introduce yourself, right? So it's interesting because you can tell who's introducing themselves by basically their name, what they do, where they live, how many kids, you know, how many, you know, pairs of shoes they have, that kind of thing versus uh, a woman who introduces herself in a very different way. Mm -hmm. The horses let me know who's in their head and who's in their heart. Yes. And, um, and then what happens you know, when a horse moves off or moves away from the one, from the gal who's in her head, um, all kinds of things occur, you know, for reactions of maybe abandonment, maybe rejection, maybe, oh, that's what people do all the time to me. They get bored and they walk away from me, et cetera, et cetera. And then the ones that, <clears throat> the women that are more, <clears throat> excuse me, used to living in a heart space, um, you know, they have the complete opposite reaction, right? Mm-hmm. It's more, no one's walking away from anybody and they're really melding and melding to one another. So what I'll do is have, and I call it the sisters, right? We're all sisters. So the sisters who are standing there feeling so rejected that their horse walked away I would ask and usually invite the one who are some of the women who are more heart centered and rooted to help this, help her sisters out mm-hmm. or this particular sister out and help her bring her horse back to her. Mm-hmm. So, and that's how I learn, you know, who's in the group and how, you know, learn something new, right? How I, how I need to, how I want to be with that particular woman. If I'm not sure, I just met her. Um, and to watch her. So um, always learning from each other. Yes, yes. So she sometimes will, um, you know, uh, step in and help shift the, for the woman who feels abandoned and lost and lonely in the middle of an arena with no horse. And all of a sudden, the horse who's walking away will turn around, at least turn around. You know, sometimes we'll come back. Mm-hmm. But it's, I think it's the coming together the collective energy of the women because when when one starts, we all start to, you know, to rally around. And, um, and then obviously she's not alone. And that's the beginning of her, of her deeper work is, you know, is it, does that feel familiar to be alone in the middle of our, an arena? Mm -hmm. What does it feel like? And when do you first remember feeling so little and alone? And um, that's also how, I work towards um, her he- helping her heal and the transformation and, and um, gently opening, creating an opening. Mm-hmm. So whatever discomfort is living inside can, has the ability and the choice, right, yeah. to leave yeah. in safety, in a safe way, and she won't fall apart. Yeah, exactly. Wow. She'll be lighter, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So the viewers and listeners, how can they already tap into horse energy, even though they may not be around horses physically? Is there a way for them to start practicing that? Oh, of course. I would suggest, let's see. For those who have horses or had a favorite horse or have an experience or a memory of a horse, um, 
Do you bring that, bring her, he or she up in the quietness of your own mind, mm -hmm. right? To go outside, to, you know, go outside. Use your own practices, right, to get centered and quiet. And then invite that horse, you know, uh, from your, I might get emotional again, oh. from your soul where she or he lives into your mind's eye and just invite and wait for he or she to arrive. Mm -hmm. Right. And then just let it go and then just see what, feel what happens. And I think that way the horses, they never, they never leave. They never leave us. They're always part of us. If we have that experience, you know, in the past with the physical connection of the horse and, um, you know, just stay there as long as you, as long as um, you're able mm. uh, with this image, and um, just really enjoy it and um, savor it. And the ones who haven't had a personal experience, but <clears throat> for the women and uh, men too, who are drawn to them, I would say, um, don't be shy. Go out and take pictures. You know, if there are horses around, mm -hmm. uh, no one's going to be upset if you take pictures of their horses, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're around, ask permission. Of course, I'll say yes. Um, and experiment with the picture taking because horses can be a little tricky if you yes. get too close to them because they look, you know, really weird. They look like, I don't know, disfigured weirdness. So step back, even though you want them want to get so close, step back a bit. <clears throat> And um, take a lot of pictures because you'll find one that you really like. And I would say, <clears throat> excuse me, I would say at that point, <clears throat> if it's on your phone, um, keep it accessible mm -hmm. so you can bring it up and touch the phone, touch your finger on the face or whatever, however you photograph the horse. Mm -hmm. And just... I guess I'm rubbing my hand, just rub, right? And close your eyes and just be however you are with the horse on your phone in that moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, if you're able to get close to a horse, um, wear a shirt that you don't mind um, getting smelly, yeah. right? And nothing like good old horse slobber. Oh, yeah. um, right <laughs> Horse love it bread. that smell right? oh my goodness that's so you want to put that in a bottle and just have it with you all the time right we'll be millionaires when we bottle that smell <laughs> and then um, you know i always say it's like having a movie star you know autograph your hands you never want to wash it so put the shirt and i have done the, i did this before when i wasn't around horses put the shirt in a baggie and zip the baggie up and you'll always have that beautiful smell Mm. Um, and um, eventually I'm hopeful that the horses will guide you back to them one way or the other yeah yeah they will I'm sure yeah, yeah, yeah. wow so amazing thank you so much for bringing your skills and wisdom and knowledge into the world and oh, for working God. with the horses and the horse energies it's such an amazing amazing role that you have i can't tell you how grateful i am for you to to do that that's just well yeah. thank you thank you and it's yeah. uh you know it's i don't use this term a lot but it's i do use it a lot but i'm careful on how i use it and i feel it's a true blessing yeah. that right that i've been chosen i think i feel i believe to be in this way with horses and with women so yeah wonderful wonderful thank you thank you thank, thank you, you. Really thank awesome you.